The protractor, which is also known as a mitre gauge, can be fitted in either of the two outer slots in the table, the left-hand slot or the right-hand slot, and it can be fitted in this way around or this way around, it depends on what the job calls for. Now you may find, if you've got it this way around, that uh, the side pressure finger can actually foul the safety guard if the guard's set down low. Well, either use the protractor in this slot over here, if that's the case, or you can relocate the side pressure finger by simply unclipping it and snapping it into these storage locations here, and then you've got it on the outboard side, it won't, it won't affect your cutting. Now, when would you use a protractor as a leading edge or a trailing edge protractor? Because you can have the work up against a protractor like this, and hold the work against a sandpaper face, and this is called a leading edge protractor because the protractor is going first. Um, and it, you'd use this when you are cutting a fairly wide board. I'll just lift the guard up a little bit to get under. For example, if I tried to cut a board of this width with a protractor around this way as a trailing edge protractor, then I've got a problem. The board just won't fit in. Uh, so the easy fix, turn the protractor around and start off like so. Now it's important that you hold the work down on the table and that you hold it firmly to the sandpaper face of the protractor and that you keep pressure downwards on the protractor. That's the way you get the most accuracy. By pushing this downwards, you engage some V-grooves at the bottom of the track with V-grooves on the protractor sliding strip and that gives you the most accurate result. So let's just do a cut like this. I'm going to keep my hands well out of the line of the saw blade. The guard could actually come down a little bit. It's a bit high there. That's fine. And gripping firmly, do the cut. how I pulled the board sideways at the end of the cut rather than just sliding it back still in contact with the sandpaper face because there is a danger if you just pull it straight back in the line it just traversed that the spinning saw blade could give you slight recut damage of this edge and cost you that nice sharp clean edge. If the material you're cutting is narrow enough to fit between the upstand of the protractor and the saw blade when the protractor is fully back then this is the way you should cut it. As a trailing edge protractor, it's a bit more comfortable. If uh, the piece of wood you want to cut is wider than you can cope with in the leading edge mode, that is, put the protractor at the end of its travel and then measure back the distance from the upstand to a little way in from the front of the blade. If the wood's any wider than that, then convert the work center to the cross-cut mode and do it as a cross-cut. You'll see that shortly. Another instance where you might use the cross-cut mode is when you're cutting long lengths of timber, heavy pieces, say a number of studs or rafters or so on. Now, you wouldn't normally cut anything of this length in the table saw mode. If it's just the odd piece, I'll do it now to show you a couple of important safety considerations. Firstly, always consider the off-cut. You've heard me say that earlier in this video. It's just as important in cross-cutting as it is in ripping. So I've got a Triton multi-stand out there with a lump of wood in the jaws and that's going to look after my off-cut. Because this piece is only 2.4 metres long, I can pretty safely stand here and hold it firmly down to the table and against the mitre gauge during the cut. If it was much longer, if it was heavier, I'd have another multi-stand with another piece of wood on this side of the, of the uh, beam. Now, it's not a good idea to have somebody help you controlling a long, heavy off-cut when you're cross-cutting. The simple reason being that if they are slightly ahead of you in their movement, then you will definitely pinch that wood on the saw blade and perhaps cause a kickback or an accident. So it is better to do this with a couple of outboard supports if you're not prepared to convert the cross-cut mode. But provided you take a bit of care, it's all very straightforward.
you'll get an even higher level of accuracy if you do your long heavy cross cuts in the cross cut mode because you're moving the saw which is tightly controlled rather than a big heavy lump of wood. If you want to cut two or four pieces the same length then provided they're of manageable length and that you can comfortably handle them you can do them in the table saw mode against the protractor it is a bit easier in, in the cross cut mode but if you're in this mode and you need to do a couple of pieces then line up the outside edges of the pieces preferably tape them together rather than relying on your hand grip you can use ducting tape like this or the wide masking tape is also pretty good you only need to measure or mark one of your pieces I've just marked the front one and then park it clearly on the waist side of the cut and I always like to sneak up on my cut rather than just go through relying on eyesight because you can get a bit of parallax error so I'll do a little test nick then pull back and see which way I've got to move my wood always start off obviously on the waist side And those two pieces are now exactly the same length, right on the line. Let's say you want to cross cut a, piece, a length of wood into a number of short, identical lengths. You may be tempted to try and fit the fence at a stop, so that you can just butt the work up against the stop and then make a cut. Well, don't. For the simple reason that when you finish that cut, you'll have a piece of wood trapped between the fence and the spinning saw blade. If that piece of wood skews even slightly, it will come whistling out towards you. There is a way, however. I've just stuck this little block onto the face of my fence. The block is 15 millimeters thick. And now I can set the fence to the dimension I want to end up with, plus 15 millimeters. And then I can use the stop, that little block, as a setting stop. So I can slide my work in, butt it up against the stop, make my cut, and that stop has created a little bit of escape between the end of the piece and the rip fence so it won't have a tendency to get flung out and this way you can safely cut a number of short pieces to exactly the same length. Another method of attaching a block to the fence is to get a piece of metal say two millimeters thick the blade of an old T-square is a good idea drop it in the slot um, so it stands up vertically and then you can fit a G-clamp back here out of the way to gently clamp the block of wood to the edge of the fence without damaging either the fence or the ruler. We strongly recommend against screwing anything directly to the fence using a, a tapered screw because a screw will raise a pucker on the surface and that'll affect your future rip cuts. If you do want to have an easier method of fitting things to the fence and if you're of a bit of an inventive bent then remove the end caps from the fence make yourself up a strip of say steel that's got tapped holes at say 150 mil centers and then drill a series of holes to match up with those centers so you've always got a spot to screw something or bolt something directly to the fence. Let's say you want to cut some narrow material into a number of short little blocks such as for a parquetry inlay style of tabletop. Well you might want to keep good hand control of the small pieces that you're cutting off. One way you can do it is this. This simple jig which attaches to your protractor, two strips of MDF one of them up on edge so that you can screw it to the upstand of the protractor, the other one down flat screwed to this one. Make this one wide enough so that when you cut into it, right here, it doesn't completely lose the plot and have this piece going through as a further reinforcement. Down here we've just got a little stop block screwed on at the distance of the piece I want to cut. So then I can feed my work in up against the stop Keep good hand control on both sides of the saw blade. Keep your thumbs tucked in. And this hand should be over the protractor so I can keep downward pressure on it. And then it's as easy as this.